recorded. Okay. What were some of your other favourite haunts in London when, uh, when you were here? Um, Jay Sheikis. Mm. I used to go to Jay Sheikis all the time. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Fantastic oysters and, uh, yeah, just good fish. And, you know, it's such a sort of theatre hangout. And, uh, you know, I, it's sort of like not... You know, when I when I came to do the play on the West End, everybody said, "Oh, you're going to hang out at Jay Shiki's all the time because that's where everybody hangs out in the theater world." And I was like, you know, I'm the kind of guy that goes like, well, if that's where everybody hangs out, then I'm not hanging out there. But I did, and because <laughs> the food was so good, and it was, and it felt like sort of like um, an iconic sort of after you've done your show, you go have a martini and have some oysters and hang out with your friends that came to see the show, and then you all go home and. Um, that's yeah. That was it. Was fantastic. I loved it. Um, would you consider coming back to do anything else on the West End? Is, is stage something that you'd be interested in? in going uh, back to do? I think that if I stay in this business, if I continue as an actor, I think there will be a point down the road where uh, theater is all I want to do. Um, and I absolutely would love to come back to the West End, but I just want to wait until my kids are off to uh, college before I do that again. That was the hardest thing for me. Six months, you know, I mean, they came and visited, uh, but still, um, I think when, it's, when they're off to school and it's just Margarita and I again and we can just sort of hang in, in, in a city for six months and do, do a play, that's when I'll come back to the West End if I get that opportunity. What, what age are your children? Uh, our daughter is 16 and a half and our little boy is turning 12 next month. Have, have either of them shown any signs of following in your footsteps? Uh, no. <laughs> what, what do you think, you'd, what would your reaction be if they did? Uh, yeah, you know, that's a, that's a, that's, there's two sides to that answer because, uh, I have such respect for actors and, and, um, the craft of acting. I, I do. I mean, I think that if it's approached the right way, it can be really an honorable and beautiful, um, uh, way of, of, de of, of putting your time in your life. I mean, I, I'm a little less... You know, there's, there's such a fascination with fame these days, you know. There's something about um, people just want to be famous for any reason whatsoever. It's just like they'll, they'll just do anything. They'll, they'll, do, they'll put the most embarrassing, like horrendous videos of themselves on YouTube. Just to, So that sort of element of it I'm, I'm a little more, I'm more suspicious of. But the actual craft of acting in the theater and learning it there and, and the desire to tell a good story and to collaborate with other people that are really passionate about it, I think is an incredibly um, noble venture. And so if one of my kids said that to me, I'd say, look, you know, cut your teeth in the theater and learn to love that. And then, you know, if something else sort of comes along, that's, um, then, then you'll be prepared for it, you know. So You've been in a couple of big TV shows, mm -hmm. and, and, and these days we're seeing so much good television being made, good adult stories are being yeah. told on television. Would you ever look at going back to television if the right job came along? Uh, you know, I, for me, it's all about... Um, I, I totally agree with you. I think the best storytelling is happening in television right now, mm. and I think has been for some time, actually. Mm. I think this new sort of cable model of 10 episode or 13 episode or even mini series and the sort of Netflix like we make a 10 episode story and bam you can get it all and it's done. I, I, this is a great thing for storytelling and I think that um, for me what's perfect about the way that I'm working right now or, or not working I, mean, I just took a year and a half I haven't been on a set since Emperor that's mm -hmm. almost a year and a half is the fact that I can do that if I was working on Lost right now, I would not have been able to go, you know what, it's time for me to take a year and a half and just be at home and uh, be with my kids and my wife and do things outside the business and completely drop out for a while. Um, that's what's really good about a film here and there, maybe a play, is the flexibility, is my, my being able to determine when I'm working and when I'm not. And the only reservation that I would have about going back to doing television would be that structure again and, and that, mean, that yeah. freedom being taken away from me. Could the right role tempt you back, though, if it was a really meaty role that, that grabbed you? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, it, it's possible. 
I'm still um, hopeful that I'm going to continue to find those types of roles in the two-hour format. Mm. You know, a, a movie like Emperor, and and what I will start to look for after the first of the year is, um, again, smaller. You know, sort of independently financed films where I um, am really excited by the director's vision, and I get to do something that I haven't done before. Mm -hmm. When you've spent 18 months doing what you want to do. How difficult will it be to return in, to return to the regime of the film set? Uh, it could be difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be difficult. difficult. I mean, you've got to have a big, big change in your attitude to everything when you're in a film set, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, I struggle with it sometimes, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of people that are kind of in your face and this and this and in your space and... Mm -hmm. We need you on set right now, and I need to go to the bathroom. You can go to the bathroom. Uh, it's a lot of people um, that are sort of leading you around by the hand. Mm -hmm. Being an actor, a lot of the time, feels like you're sort of regressing into some sort of childhood where somebody's mm -hmm. telling you where you need to be exactly and holding your hand all the time, and I can't stand that. You know? <laughs> um, so, yes. Um, it'll be interesting to see how I react to getting back on a film set if that happens soon. Um, but it'll probably be like kind of putting on an old glove, you know. Mm -hmm. Do you have any projects in the pipeline? Sorry, <laughs> do you have any projects in the pipeline? No, nothing. Are you looking at scripts? Uh, I yeah, I st I've started looking at scripts. I've read a couple of things in the last uh, ten days that I've, I'm actually pretty excited about. One that's a little more immediate and one that's not until uh, sort of an April or May type situation. So I'm starting to read stuff again and uh, yeah, and I'm excited. So that's a good indication that, um, you know, it'll be, it'll be fun. Have you enjoyed working with the British director? Like mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you Peter's. find that British directors work differently from, from American directors? Uh... I don't know. I, I didn't. I don't. I, the only thing about the experience with Peter that I thought was really unique, uh, and I don't know if it was because Peter really uh, campaigned for it, or if it was the nature of the of the financing of the film. But we got an opportunity for two weeks in New Zealand to do pre production stuff that was very rare, I think, in the movie business these days. And um, and 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 we even got to sit around he and I in a room and go through the script and make notes on scenes and talk about scenes. And then he would hand those notes to the writer who was there in New Zealand. And those notes would come back in the script in like a day and a half later. And then we could go through it and we'd do it again. And we did like four or five rounds of that in the two weeks that we had leading up to shooting. And uh, I think that it really helped us sort of focus the script and, uh, and get some of our, and to own it, feel like it was ours a little bit more. Can I just ask, you were saying that you, you felt it was really important to watch Emperor in the, uh, in, in the cinema when you went for the, the premiere in Japan. Why, why do you not usually watch your, your own films? Uh, they're just not, they're kind of ruined for me. <laughs> <laughs> no surprises. You know, I, nobody, I love going into a theater, into a, a theater theater or into a movie theater and waiting for the lights to come down and to drop into a story. It's one of my favorite things. And when I'm in it, it just doesn't have the same effect. And, and I, you know, I've sort of dedicated months of my life. And once you're behind the scenes and so integrally, you know, every day it's like such a big part of your life, the, the making of it and, the put it and trying to create the illusion of it that you can't just then forget all that and like experience it the way that I would experience a film that I've had absolutely nothing to do with. Was Fellers, just to go back to the film, was he better known in Japan than in the USA? I just asking that because I think 25 years after the war, Hirohito gave him a special honour that's only bestowed on a select few. Uh, I didn't know that, but that is an interesting question. <laughs> and it wouldn't surprise me. Right if he was more well-known uh -huh. for whatever role he played. Yeah. I mean, that, that wouldn't surprise me at all. He, he definitely got some big razzmatazz award from the Emperor. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. <laughs> okay, sorry.